Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. All right, uh, John Moxley returned to open up the Dynamite show, and he did a weird interview. Shivani was in the ring, and Moxley said he hadn't been doing a lot of talking lately, but he'd been doing a lot of thinking. And he came to talk to somebody who wasn't here tonight, and that was Darby Allen. He said, we need to have a talk. I'm not going to be hard to find. He starts to leave, and then he turns around, he comes back, and he says, listen, it take some time. Everyone's going to need to wrap their brains around this, but we're going to have to start right now. He points at Tony Schiavone, and he says, this is not your company anymore. And then he left. And later on in the show, there was a, a deal backstage where some geeks were standing around, and Marina Shafir showed up and uh, destroyed all of them and left with Moxley. So I don't know what this means. I know John Moxley has always been very strong on, on Marina Shafir. Yes. So so she's getting, obviously she's getting a big push. Um, you know, she, she was good in the segment. Um, so we'll see. Um, it looks like uh, Moxley and Darby, I don't know if they're, when this is going on, I'm going to pay. We got a pay per view in in uh, ten days coming off of Wembley. You know, obviously. Hey, um, that's better than in three days, like last year. Yeah, it is better. Danielson and Jack Perry is the main event, and um, the big, you know, the other big one is uh, Pack and Will Osprey, which will, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure they're going to have a fantastic match. I'm sure Danielson and Jack Perry are going to have a great match. But um, we've actually got five matches announced so far. We got Danielson and Perry. We got Will Ospreay and Pac. Swerve and Hangman will be a steel cage match. Right. Willow and Statlander is a Chicago street fight, which they set up in the next segment. And Daniel Garcia faces MJF. So it's a, it's it's stuff. They um, I know Triller had a deal where you could order both pay per views for seventy dollars. So it's basically I think it was seventy. I think it was 35 each. So you get a big discount if you ordered both. Um, so we'll see. I mean, last year with a one-week thing, they still did over 100000 Um Now, Tony said that this pay-per-view, the all-in pay-per-view, um, was the second biggest of the year. or one of the two, Actually, I think his wording was one of the two biggest of the year with Revolution. Revolution did 180. I think that they've had, um, over the last year, I think that the... Um, there's been a couple that have been close to like 145. Um, obviously, you know, this is, it would be since All In last year, which did I think 205. But um, so I guess that that means the number is, you know, 145 to 180. It's a pretty pretty big range. I know that I have seen some the the TV numbers that I've seen, which are very early. Um, they weren't through the roof or anything like that. I haven't really done the comps because, again, just a lot of without a computer, um, just very, very behind on everything. But I'll try to do that tomorrow. Um, but um, you know, so it's, I if it's look, it's the second biggest of the year behind this. I don't think I never thought it would be the Sting pay per view, the Sting retirement show. So if it's the second biggest, if it does one fifty, one sixty, it's a success. He he mentioned uh, over fifty thousand paid. Um, so he did not say that at the press conference, but he did say that in a tweet. And, um, you know, um, the merch, by the way, the merch sales were huge for both Cardiff and uh, Wembley. Um, you know, easily, obviously, their second biggest merch night in the history of the company in Wembley. Um, second biggest crowd. I mean, obviously, with 50,000 people paid, uh, you're going to do a hell of a lot more merch than... 20,000 at Arthur Ashe Stadium. So, I mean, it's a given it was going to be the second biggest. But but they actually did as far as dollars per head in merch. They were actually um, way up from last year at Wembley. Um, total merch, not way up because obviously 80,000 paid versus low 50s um, is a big d difference to make up. But the per head was the per head on the merch was actually way up this year. So that's a good sign. You know, it's funny. You, you come off that high. I mean, that show. Um, like again, like I, I feel bad about the, um, you know the the thing because I have not seen the pay per view, so I saw it in the stadium. It's a very you know a, a stadium show when you're at the stadium and the pay per view are very different. An arena show it's not as different because I I think you know the stadium's just so big and you're so far away and the sound doesn't travel well and blah blah blah, you know. Um, 
I mean, obviously, you know, the Swerve match and the um, MJF match and the Gauntlet match, you know, were all great matches. I mean, no doubt. But, um, you know, it's like I, I really don't think that I could have a feel because I know people who think that that Danielson match was the best match in AEW history. And I thought it was a fantastic match, but I would not call it the best match in AEW history. But there are people who, who think that it was and they saw it on pay-per-view and, and maybe on pay-per-view it was. Must have been one hell of a match. I probably actually watch it. But um, anyway, I mean, the, the, the key to all this is they came off that show on Sunday, and I thought it was a real high, fantastic show, great crowd, great atmosphere, you know, all the returns or surprises, everything, really fantastic show. And then here in Champaign, man, it was, it was tough. I mean, I, you, know, I, you know, Ricochet came out, and I mean, I think in most cities with a good crowd, they'd have blown the joint out like they did in Wembley for him. Um, they really didn't for him. I mean, they, you know, he got a good reaction. Jamie Hayter got a good reaction, but it was not like, you know, first time back or anything like your, you know, your, you know, your early return um, as far as crowd reaction. I mean, it was a, it was a hard crowd. They did react to, you know, Ricochet and Kyle Fletcher later in as the match went on. But, um, you know, it wasn't like they were on fire to see Ricochet in his, in his, first singles match um he had to work for it he did work for it he was very good but i think that was the whole story of everything it was a uh, uh, small crowd um and uh, a tough crowd well anyway we had a she and hangman page which was a great match and it did have a lot of heat and it did have the greatest ddt in the history of wrestling on oh the good lord apron. yes and of course hangman won with the uh with the buckshot and absolutely, this match was so great. I mean, yeah, one of my was, favorite was... Dynamite matches in forever. And then afterwards, Swerve's music hits, and he comes down. They go face-to-face -face in the ring, and Swerve cuts a promo on him and just says, I may not have a belt around my waist. I'm always going to be referred to as world champion. It's always going to be my house. Hangman says, you're not a champion. You're just a piece of shit. Broke into my home. We wrestled three times. You beat me once because of Nana, once because of Nana and Cage, and the third, you couldn't even beat me in 30 minutes. You're not as good as I am. So Swerve challenged him to a cage match okay, so at he's All In. O he's 0-2-1, but, but, you know, I, yeah, it was interference finishes, whatever. Yes. He says uh, he wants a cage match at All In, and he wants Hangman to prove that he is the Hangman that he should be. This father who got into the car with his wife to go have the second child. He says, you know what? You were so focused on me, you can't win the title, you can't win the Owen, you can't win the gauntlet, because all you do is focus on me. What kind of man are you going to be in that cage? And Hangman gets pissed, and he drops the mic, and he storms off. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.